You're live on That's Facebook, not YouTube. Fantastic. Fantastic. You're live on Facebook, not YouTube. All right, we're live on Facebook. Stand by Facebook. YouTube hanging. Stand by Facebook, people. Oh my God, YouTube. Facebook. You're live, you're live, you're live. All right, we're live. Uh, hold on. We're sorry, live. Sorry. Ah, Jesus. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay, hey, we're live. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. All right, guys. We're <laughs> Uh, welcome to Onset. We're live. If you don't know, we stream to YouTube and Facebook. Facebook is doing well today, I guess. Yeah. Right. Hey, Facebook. If it starts going crazy, you know, go to YouTube. That We always have to give that because sometimes Facebook goes crazy. This is advanced flash photography, which basically means that <laughs> if you ask me a basic question, I will mock you. You should have been here last week. <laughs> last week we talked about why you might use a flash, basic flash concepts. If you missed that one, don't worry about it. Uh, it takes usually several times for this stuff to get in your head when you're first using flash, so you can't uh, see this too much. Uh, I am Daniel Norton, if I didn't say that already. I'm a little sick today. Justin over here is going to be our subject. Seth's on the Mighty Mix. And uh, yeah, we're going to make some stuff happen. So there are, this is where I get to sell stuff to you. Stand by for a sales pitch. So apparently, <laughs> I'm so bad. This is camera one. Camera one. one, on one, one you built this space with me. <laughs> I, 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 I was right when I said it was camera one. All right. It says one. <laughs> I'm supposed to look at the cameras. So there's a deal. If, if you buy Profoto lights, uh, you guys know that I use Profoto. If you buy a B10 or a B10 Plus, you get uh, $500 or $1,000 worth of accessories for free. If you are in the store, uh, you guys can pick your accessories, I guess. If you're online buying it on the web, there's like kits made up, or you can call on the phone. If any of that works. Also, if you get an A1 or an A1X, you get stuff. Um, the A1, it doesn't say it here. You get an extra battery. I think that's only if you're buying in the store. So if you want to know more about this, when Cliff comes back, I'll do it so that he'll give me my five cents for doing this pitch. Uh, anyways, they're great lights. If you're looking to buy lights, go for it. Um, anyways, I'm Dan Martin. I said that already. Advanced Flash. So last week in Basic Flash, we kind of covered more or less why you might use Flash, which is about control, right? That's what we want. We want to be able to control our space as photographers. We, we write with light, right? So uh, lighting is going to allow us to shape and, and our subject. Flash is going to allow us to take control of our space. A flash is very powerful, you know, when you compare it to things like light inside of a space. Even though the flash only fires for a very brief time, uh, it's so much power that you can basically wipe the light out in the space, and then you can shape it as you like. So we're going to do that today. But... We're going to get into some more kind of funky techniques. What we're going to do is we're going to play around with the idea of using a flash in kind of a more creative or different way. Just keep in mind that like most of this stuff that I'm going to show you in and of itself is not going to make for the photo. Like if you go out and just do this stuff, you're just going to have a bunch of gimmicky pictures that don't mean anything. The trick here is to learn how to do this so you can make it work when a subject that needs this technique is in front of you. Right, that's what this is all about. So practice it, but know that just because you do a multiple exposure, that doesn't make it a great shot. It might still be a terrible shot. Um, it, what I always say is, if you remove the the subject matter and you you know so le uh, you know if you're shooting uh, you know something, you remove the basic subject matter of it, like you're shooting a celebrity, right? But let's say you shoot a regular person, is it still a good picture? If it's not, then it's not a good picture even with the celebrity. Same thing here. If you're using these special techniques and the shot itself is not good. It's not going to make it better, right? You need to have a reason to use things, but we're just going to kind of uh, go through how to do it, and we'll talk a little bit about how flash works. Um, as, as promised, I'm using the more advanced flash meter today, which I lost already. Could I do that? I hung it on one of the stands. There it is. They wonder what, what's up with his pants. Me? Yeah. With his oh, pants? I can push him down. No, no, it looks good. I like if that style. The internet really cares that much. <sighs> All right, so normally... Uh, because oh, normally, because Seth's here, I borrow his 308 Seconic, which is a really good meter if you're just starting out. It's kind of the basic meter. It'll do most things that you want a meter to do, uh, unless you know there's other things, which I'm going to show you, that this meter can do. So this is a 308. These are like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars, pretty inexpensive. You know, this is probably double that price-wise. This is a, a 858D, so it's fancy. It's a touch screen, just like your phone. Um, so, a couple of things you can do with this that, that, you, that, that make it kind of, uh, besides the special stuff. The dome on the top, when you're doing instant readings, can be recessed. So by recessing your dome, you're going to control like kind of what light hits it. So if you are the type of person that likes to do ratios, which by the way, if you checked out my video this week, it was on ratios. Um, this is nice because, if, let's say I'm metering, I want to meter the two sides of Justin's face towards, let's say, the lights, right? If I had lights over here. 
this is okay, but it's still gonna get some spill. If I do this, it's really only gonna pick up the light that's coming at it. So this is very useful when you wanna meter individual lights in the scene that has multiple lights. Also, you can flatten it out so it fits neatly in your bag. This is, we normally are using incident uh, light meters, and I kind of gonna talk a little bit about that today. So your camera has a reflected light meter in it. So there's kind of two different types of uh, light meters, right? A reflected meter looks at the light that's bouncing off the subject and then tries to get it basically to 18% gray, if you guys have ever heard that term before, which is the reason why that if you were to point your camera at a white wall and take a shot of it, it'll probably come out dark. And if you shot it at a black wall and, and took a shot of it, it'd probably come out light because your camera's trying to make those things gray. That's how it operates, right? Same thing with the reflected meter. If you had a reflected light meter, it would do the same thing, which is why sometimes you hear people talk about using a gray card for that. This actually has that built in, the reflected meter. It has a spot meter, basically. So you look through the, uh, the meter at something to get a very specific reading, okay? Spot meters are really useful if you want to, let's say, shoot somebody in front of windows and you want to know what the exposure is out the window, right? I mean, we all know that it's F16, 125, but if you didn't know that, right? So you could have this out the window and you could be getting a spot meter so you know what the exposure is outside so you can balance it, right? This is also useful if you're shooting, let's say, a product and you're hitting with a bunch of different lights, you can come in and do each light individually. So it's pretty useful for that. Uh, landscape photographers use them a lot. Other times people will look at something, a scene, and be like, okay, well, I'm gonna meter a few different spots and then average it. So there's different ways you can do that. And actually this meter will average things. It does a lot of math for you. So that's, that's what the reflected meter does. Incident meter measures the light falling on your subject. So if I'm putting it right here and I'm measuring this, right? If I put it here and I measure the light, and let's say it comes out to F8, and Justin's my subject, right? But if Justin leaves and I put anything else here, and this is still reading F8, I should still get a great, great exposure, right? It should be correct. This is why when people ask me all the time, well, hey, what do you do with people who have darker skin or lighter skin or whatever? If you're using an incident meter, it doesn't matter. It's, ma it's metering the light that's falling on the space. If you're using a reflected meter, and I meter off of Justin's skin tone, and I get my exposure, then somebody comes in that's much more pale or much darker, that will change, right? Because the, me the, the meter itself is trying to make that thing gray, which means it's gonna under or overexpose things. That's why boxes of film and stuff used to say stuff like, you know, adjust exposure. Unless you're using a reflected meter, none of that matters. Normally for flash photography, we're going to use an incident meter. So no matter what I put in front of my camera, as long as I'm using this meter, I will get the correct exposure, you know, in theory. Correct mathematically, right? I always say, and somebody's about to tell me online that I'm wrong, but the meter is just like any other tool. You're the artist, right? The meter's not the artist. If I meter here and it says F8, and then I look at the picture that's created, and I think it's too dark, then I'm gonna give more exposure, right? Because I'm the one that decides what's correct. This is just gonna give me what it thinks is right. You, you may expose things differently. A lot of people will, uh, We'll look at, uh, let's say, a portrait and expose it. Some people like to underexpose a little bit and then tweak it or whatever. I like to overexpose stuff a lot. People always tell me my stuff's hot. That's hot, Daniel. You know, so there you go. Um, so yeah, so you can do a lot of funky things with this meter as well, which we will do. And uh, yeah, let's get started, I guess. Uh, now take a drink of coffee. Any questions so far? Cheers is not a question, but yes, thank you. Uh, I will try to say all the stuff I'm using as I go, but I'll probably forget. So if I'm using something, you want to know what it is, go ahead and ask. You can come a little closer to me, please. So this camera is an Nikon uh, Z6. I wasn't super lazy today, so I brought my tripod in, which is nice. Okay. So this is Justin. He looks good, right? I'm looking at him. I'm like, Justin Thank looks you. good. It's a good looking guy standing here. I'm looking at the light. I'm like, that actually looks really nice. I'll take a photo of Justin, right? If I were to take my, let me turn this off, my camera, and you know, I'm gonna shoot at F8, right? Because we like that. At 250, we'll say 200. ISO 100. Okay, so if we are trying to control the light in the space, so I do this every time, and it's look like part of the advanced flash glass, because it's something you should always be doing. If you want to control the light in the space, you, the best way to do it with flash is to eliminate all the available light with your camera settings, which we can very easily do. If I take my camera and I set it at its maximum sync speed, which someday I'll figure out what it is on this camera, but I'm gonna put it at 160, 1160. My lowest ISO within its normal range, which is 100, 
and then I set my aperture at such a place that none of the available light affects my shot. That's gonna vary, right? Usually I like to be about three stops under. Look at this, I can use a light meter. There's one in my camera, of course, but I'll use this one, because why not? So I'm gonna turn this guy on, a little screen comes up with a smiley face. I'm gonna go into ambient mode, and I'm gonna set, match the, the settings on my camera. My, uh, oh look at that, he's a naked. Oh look, it's like a touch screen, pretty cool, right? Is that out of focus or am I just blind? Uh, <laughs> uh, 1160 uh, of a second, 100 ISO. What I don't have there is the f-stop because I don't know what it is. The meter's gonna tell me that piece of information. So I go like this, bloop. Oh, perfect. For those people that like the really, really fast lenses, right? That's the .07 lens. If you got one of those, you're good to go. You could shoot in here, no problem. Okay, so uh, that's the light in here. If I wanna figure out if I'm underexposed enough at f8, the simplest way to do it is just adjust, I'll do my ISO to make it easy. I'll bring my ISO up three stops, which would be 800, right? And it's still only f2. So at, at f8, there's barely any light falling on him incident-wise, so I should be able to make a photo. Excuse me if my math is off today because I'm a little under the weather, but. It's... All right, so we'll take a photo, this is a good one. Boom, there he is, beautiful. <clears throat> and what do we have there? Nothing, right? Because like I said, we underexpose the scene. There's nothing gonna expose because none of the ambient light is affecting my shot. That's where we wanna be. I can, I'm in capture one, by the way. If I come over here, I can look at my histogram, which nobody really knows what the histogram is. They just put them on there to look good. So you grab this exposure, you drive it over three stops. And he's, you can just see him start to come up there, right? He's not there. So we know that we're in total control now, right? This is where we're gonna start. Now we can start shaping our light like we've been doing. So by the way, it took a whole hour to do all this last time. So this is with the advanced class, we're gonna get done in five minutes. All right, so now we take our flash. <laughs> I'm gonna have a cough drop so I don't cough on you guys. <laughs> put it in a spoon. You don't put a cough drop in a spoon. <laughs> Why not? All right. Listen, when you take medicine and it says to take a spoonful, you got to have a spoon. Just drink it from the bottle. <laughs> it doesn't say drink from the bottle. It says... When you cook, do you measure it? <coughs> it well, when I bake, I do, but I usually uh, weigh it. I'm bad. I just pour it in. But they do have plastic spoons, but then I'm an environmentalist. It's like I have my own spoon. What's the problem with having a spoon? Come on, people. That's right. All right. Now we don't have to cut the lights because why don't we have to cut the lights? Because it's not affecting our shot. We don't care. All right, so I'm going to point this light at him, and I'm adjusting the power for absolutely no reason because I'm going to use something called TTL. So that's another way to meter, right? Through the lens metering means I'm going to use my camera's meter, which is a reflected meter, right? So keeping that in mind when we do it, I'm going to use the camera's meter to meter Justin, and then basically a little tiny photo assistant runs out, meters him, comes back, tells the flash, flash gives me the correct exposure. I get to go home and not have to worry much, too much about it. So this is actually in uh, group A, which is good. So when you're, you're working with uh, various lights, flashlights, you want to put them in very, uh, groups if you're going to use a remote. So most of them have groups A, B, C, D, E, whatever, and channels. Channels are going to be like, you're shooting with another photographer at an event, you want to be on different channels because you don't want to set up anybody else's lights. Groups are within your channel, so if I want to use multiple lights, I'll have like one set in A, one set in B, so I can change their, uh, their power independently. Okay, so here we go. Boom. There he is, perfect. That's Justin. He's lit. Everything looks good. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Now you're looking at that and you're thinking, Daniel, you did that really fast and then we came for an hour long class. What are we gonna do for the rest of the class? I don't know, I mean, this is pretty much it, he's there. But there he is, right, he's, he's in. His shadow side, right, which is the side towards you, is dark because all this light that you see coming in is doing nothing, right? If I were to uh, change, what? Exposure, yeah, okay. 
Oh, I was going to give away a free pro photo. OK, if I was to change my shutter speed, <coughs> I could change my shutter speed to bring in that side, to fill in that side. So let's use the light meter again. Let's say that we like. Oh, yeah, there it is. Thank you. Let's say that we like, we like ratios, right? We're like, you know, I heard, I was watching this blog, and it was like, you need a two to one ratio, meaning that my shadow should be one stop less than my uh, ambient light. So I want to read at a 5.6 over here, right? Because I'm shooting at an f8. So I can take my meter, oops, I can put it in f mode. The f mode allows you. Nope, that's not right. Yeah, F, TF. Well, this one has the one that, oh, that's cool, okay. So what the F mode does for you is you put in your aperture, huh? right, and your ISO instead of your shutter speed in your ISO. So I'm going to dial in. Five, oh, it's already at 5.6. Look at that, 5.6, so 100. I'm going to point it towards the light source, even though Mark Wallace says not to. 0.4 seconds, half a second, right? So theoretically, about half a second. Look towards the light slightly. No, this light. Oh, that, light. Yeah. <laughs> that light? The, yeah, the important light, OK. Remain absolutely still. Oh, perfect. Now he's filled in, right? Oh, there we go. Wow. Now there oh, might be, uh, yeah, we've got a little blur over here because I'm out of focus. Because Seth put me in manual focus earlier and I didn't switch it back. There we go. Let's try that again. Set me up for failure there, he did. There we go. Nobody cares about in focus shots. We'll say for failure years ago. Ah, actually, he's pretty still. So even, even at half a second, right? He, this is pretty sharp, you know? It's, it's, it's at least Canon sharp. Oof. Right? So. <laughs> I'm, I'm brand agnostic. Okay, so now we've balanced the light, right? Now we're mixing our light. And if we want it to be darker on the shadow side, all we have to do is bring our shutter speed faster, right? Let's go to a sixth of a second. Boom, right? Now it's darker, right? So much I can do here all day long. We can just keep doing it one step. No, we're going to do that. Okay, so now we're mixing our light, right? There's basically two exposures. There's the ambient exposure and the flash exposure. Anything I do to the aperture or the ISO is going to affect both exposures. Anything I do to the shutter speed will only affect the ambient exposure. That makes sense? Now, let's say that you're one, let's say that you're not using flash, or maybe you could be using flash, I guess. And you're one of those people, let's say you have a Sony, you're like 10 gazillion ISO, clean shot, no problem. You can go into this meter and you can put it on TF mode. When you're in TF mode, you put in your shutter speed and your aperture. And it gives you the ISO. So if I just want to shoot the ambient light in here, I could be like, no, ambient light, pull. Oh, look, 12,800 ISO. That's perfect. <laughs> Who doesn't want to shoot at that? Oh, no, it's only 8,000 because I went down to 160. So, you know, at 8,000 ISO, which is pretty common, right? We're walking around shooting some Tri-X 8,000. We can definitely uh, shoot in here, and that will give us that exposure. So if you're in a situation where it's more important, let's say you're like, well, I know I need a certain depth of field, and I know that... Uh, uh, I know that I want to shut the shutter speed for, to stop the movement. Well, I'm just going to let my ISO fly because I wouldn't do it in here because 8,000 ISO is a little steep, but let's just do it. We're doing it. Now, that's the proper exposure. I actually want it to be a stop under, remember? You guys are like, what? It needs to be a stop under because I want it's my fill light. So I'm going to go over. I'm going to set my camera back to 1160. I'm going to go to what's one stop under for, uh, for the ISO. 4,000, that's right. No free pull photos anymore. You get, you get to have to answer the first question. So, boom, we shoot that. 4,000 ISO. That looks terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, the flash is probably overexposed at this point. 
Yeah, the flash, the flash is at minimum power, and it's like, look, dude, you're shooting at 8,000 ISO, you have a pro photo flash, what are you doing over here? Come on. So yeah, it's a little hot. So. Back that light up. I could back, I could use the inverse square law. Oh, man. Here we go, inverse square, ready? Whoa. Done. All right, here we go. I don't know if that's enough, we'll try. Perfect, hey. right? Inverse square, did it. Now. Oh man, that's terrible. Okay, it's so good, though, eh, whatever. I mean, it's better than 200 yeah, ISO was. Cameras. Yeah. Oh, oh, 8,000 oh. ISO. It, well, I mean, you get noise, but you also lose a little dynamic range when you crank the ISO. But anyways, you can do that, right? So it's another way to uh, to get an idea of where you're going to be set at. So you know, you can walk around a space, and you could just do this just randomly, and kind of get an idea and be like, all right, well, the average in the store is like. 2,000 ISO, whatever, so I'll stay at that. You know, you can do that. You can mix it up a little bit. Um, if you don't want your ISO swinging. So that, that's basically uh, what you can do with that. There's more, there's more to it, but we'll deal with that in a second. Let's get out of the ridiculous range now and get back in here. Does all that make sense so far? This is a moment in history. You will never see me shoot at 4,000 ISO again. All right, here we go. Back to 100 ISO. We're at F8. We're at 1160, and what happens? We're back to dark, right? Because now none of the ambient light is affecting our shot. Now, why is the background so dark? Because, number one, the way the light's facing. But also, because remember, this is a question I get all the time. They're like, Daniel, that's my name. Why is the background dark? I'm looking at it, it's gray. None of the light in the space is affecting my shot. That's not just on Justin, it's anywhere in the photo. Anything back there is gonna be dark because no light's hitting it. None of the flashlight is hitting, I should say. It makes sense so far? That was easy. We got this. Questions, thoughts, concerns? No? Okay. Question. Yes? When you're shooting in TTL, is there an assumed distance from the flash, the, between the subject and the flash, that the camera is? So is there an assumed distance with TTL? No. The beauty of TTL is that the, the, the flash is reading through your camera, OK? So it's going to do the best using your camera's meter to give you the exposure no matter where the flash is. If the flash is in the shot, it's going to, like, which sometimes happens, uh, or pointing back at the camera, it can sometimes be thrown off. But generally speaking, you can be as close or as far away as you want. I just, I'm, well, now at F8, I'm probably, let's see. Yeah, I'm 4.7, so I mean, I can get close. So does the camera adjust the flash, assuming the flash is about the same distance in the subject of the camera? No, it doesn't know, it doesn't know anything about distance. What, it, what, what happens is there's a pre flash. Oh, let me go on rear curtain. So, well, I'll show you that in a second. There's a, what happens is there's a very fast flash before the flash called the pre-flash that goes off. That bounces off. The subject goes to the lens in the camera. Math happens. It adjusts. It t talks to the radio. It goes back to the light. Adjusts the power. Fires. Doesn't care how far away the flash is. I could have my flash anywhere. It will try to give me the right exposure. If, if, if I had it turned on by mistake and somebody walked over there with my flash, it would try to light it. You know, it would do its best. Because it doesn't know. It only knows what it sees. The flash doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter the angle. It doesn't matter the distance. It doesn't matter what modifier is on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So TTL is through the lens. That's the advantage of it. Used to be they had, uh, especially for small flashes, they had what was called automatic flash. That was a little different. That basically dealt with the distance. It basically sent a beam out and then back to the flash. Yeah, well, they actually, the way that actually worked was it actually fired the flash at full power and then squelched it as soon as it got hit back with light. That's kind of how that one worked. That was automatic flash, which can be very accurate as well, but that cares. And also it can be blocked by stuff, modifiers. Other questions? That's a good question, though. Good. All right, we're cranking. All right, so let's, uh, should we do a blur now or should we do multiple exposure? Let's do multiple pop first. We're gonna get out of hand. You guys ready to get out of hand? Because it's getting about to get nuts. Should I use this thing? Yeah. I want to hear the <laughs> This is the Profoto 3098, also known as the, C1 should, what's it called, C1 Plus. This, this is a constant light, I guess. It also flashes a little bit. Um, it's, it uses the same modifiers as, as the, their little uh, A1. What's kind of neat about this is that if you want, you can use it with just your phone. You can use it with the 
kind of, I guess, the, the thing. So I'm going to break my phone out. Another thing you're going to see, 4,000 ISO, and I'm using my phone. Oh, I got a text. Hold on. All right, so C1 Plus. I'm going to turn it on. You're ready for Instagram, young man. <laughs> uh oh, device disconnected. Oh, apparently I threw the wrong button. Hold on. Boom, C1 Plus. This is why I don't use my phone. You gotta turn it on first. <laughs> you had one job, one job, keep that thing turned on. What'd you do? Turn it off. It's blinking blue and white. It's blinking. <coughs> this is always the joyous part. There we go, that seems right. Oh, there it is. All right. There it is. I'm gonna turn on the. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh. Ooh. It's kind of like, you know, like a tea light candle. But more expensive. Whoa. Look at how bright it is now. It's so, oh, it's only at, no, I think that's up all the way. Okay. No, 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 no there's more light. like a wizard, Dan. I am like a wizard. <laughs> all right, so. Well, actually, you know what we can do? I know what we can do. Let's use this to be the secondary light source. Let's have somebody hold it. Makes me look creepy. Ah. No, off. How all right. Far away do you want? That's a good question. I want you very far away, but I guess for this, you gotta be closer. All right, no, getting close. All right. All right. So, when using light, it is almost always to your best interest to put it as close as possible, especially when you're using a little tiny LED that's not gonna be particularly bright. Okay, because the closer the light is to the subject, the bigger it'll be. The bigger the light is, the softer it is, right? This is not very big, so we wanna get it as soft as possible. So what I'm going to do, because we know that this is not going to be tremendously bright. First of all, I'm going to crank it. Let's crank it. Whoa, calm it down. Oh, we can change the color temperature. Oh, my God. Oh, let's make it warm. All right. Nothing up my sleeve. We're going to take our meter, like before. This is the, there's probably a thousand videos out there like, I metered this and it's whatever. We're gonna meter this. All right, here we go. We're gonna go in this. We're gonna, we know what our f-stop is, right? Five, six, what's that? That is the C1 plus. It's like the C1, but plus. Oh. Now, yes, it is, hold on, hold on there again. Two feet away versus 17 feet away, but it's actually the same exposure as the lights in the room. That's pretty good, right? So, quarter of a second. Quarter of a second, F5.6. Don't screw it up. Here we go. Boom. Nice, it's a little warm. Should we make it? Yeah, let's go a little, little now if we want to make it a little brighter. No, yeah, come right in it. All right, yeah, yeah that's good. I'm gonna frame you up. I, I'm a little Dutch now, which is good. I'm gonna give myself a, uh, because huh. I can't turn this one up anymore, but I'm in TTL here. If I open up my, my aperture to let's say five, six, that'll make this one one stop brighter and the flash should adjust automatically. Magic. There we go. Getting a little brighter, right? Oh, look, we even see the little catch light in there. Yeah, I had a little dramatic. Yeah, come like this with it, like. In there for you. Yeah. yeah. You, want, you want to get a little bit closer? Yeah, get right in there, like, 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 like with some drama. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. No, you're in the shot, it's okay. You can be in the shot, I don't mind. Oh, yeah. See, now we're wrapping it in, making a little more flavor with it, right? It's coming from here. It's in the shot, <laughs> which is nice. Spicy. Spicy flavor, mm. right? Constant light. Was I doing that? Oh, that's what we're doing, right? We're doing, uh, now we're gonna do, we're getting into Seth territory here. Oh, great. Should I put this on a stand? No, I can't. Should we put it on a stand? Is it a quarter 20? It is a quarter 20. You wanna put it on a tripod? I'll put it on something. I got a Because I don't trust that people will be able to hold it steady. I got a tripod with a quarter 20. All right, tripod with quarter 20. Who has a 3H to quarter 20 adapter in their pocket for a free pro photo? Nothing. 
you just mentioned that this is a Colorado tripod? This is a Colorado yeah. tripod sold exclusively at Adorama. It's actually a really good tripod. It looks like... Titanium and carbon fiber. You're welcome. I don't have a quarter... It looks nice. I don't know. I'm not one to judge. I mean, it didn't fall apart yet, which is a good... <laughs> yeah. That's generally a good, good sign. So if you are at a party or something, let's say you're at a party, you're like, I'm at a party, and you want to make a photo. Yeah, hey, I'm at a party. I mean, you already busted out your pro photo light. Why not take a tripod out as well and stick this thing over here? They need to make a little 5 eighths. They actually do. Manfrotto makes an adapter that goes from quarter 20 to 5 eighths. So if you're going to put this on a stand, that's what I would do. Did you say Frodo? Manfrotto. Not Frodo like Frodo like Baggins. Frodo Baggins. That's what I thought. No. You have no, a, Manfrodo. They got excited. There's no neck? They're nerdy. Oh, there it is. I mean, I have no neck, but all right, here we go. Oh. All right. Oh, wow. Look at, look at all this grip. There's <laughs> <laughs> some intense tripods for this. I just want you to know. <laughs> this is so old. Is this Colorado? They announced this thing like three months ago. I have been dying to use this because it is the silliest thing, but it's awesome. <laughs> all right, so here we go. It's like a hockey puck with a light in it. I love it. All right. There is no, there is no sale on this, though. You want this, you got to pay full price. All right. Should I reveal my socks again and make the rest of I have no idea what it costs. Once you, once you know you need a piece of equipment, it doesn't matter what it costs. You'll make it happen. All right, so we're going to do... I've got to give myself some space here. Uh, okay. There we go. All right. Just like my studio, chairs keep appearing in here. Why are there so many chairs in this room? All right. All right, here we go. So remember what I said, there's two exposures, right? The trick here, or one of the tricks, is to get him as close as possible to this light at the beginning of the exposure, which is going to be a longer exposure. When he moves away from the light, he'll be out of that exposure, right? So that way we can then hit him with the second exposure, which is the flash. If you overlap your exposures, you're going to have a big muddy mess, right? Which is, you know... Not uncommon. So you take like, just with your weight, like lean into that light. Uh, a little more. All right, then let me see if you lean and kind of thrust this way, like a lot. Boom, and you'll look at this light when you do it. Yep, all right, so. Here we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two exposures. First, we'll test each one, mostly to build up the drama. I'll turn off the flash for a second. I'm gonna have Justin come to his first position. So first position, yeah, like all like mean, yeah, there we go. Look at me. Uh, should we meter it? Let's meter it, right? Now when you say look at you, yeah. into the camera? Or yeah, into the camera, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because now, you Spike know. Spike the camera or look at you? Wow. He's got all the cool terminologies. Ooh, lingo. Essentially, I am the camera. All right. Third of a second at 5.6, but we realized that that exposure wasn't really bright enough for us. So we're gonna go, plus we need enough time for him to move. So I'm gonna go to, why do I do that? I don't need to tell anyone. I'm gonna go to one second. You just want me to move to position two? No, just stay for the first one. So if he stays there for the full second, he's gonna be a little hot, but he's not gonna be there for the whole second. So I'm gonna, that's fine. Oh, can we kill these two? What? What happens when I do this? What would you judge us in the power? Yeah, you're on the wrong one. I'm not sure how to use the phone light. If you have any phone light questions, I can I can tell you. Oh, you know what I need is the. We should flag it off the background. Cliff. No, I'll just point it away. I need the bounce. That's a it's a ball actually. No, we're not going to use a flag. We have so much grip going on with this thing. All right, I'm taking the dome off. You want to throw a piece of gas tape on it? No, if we had the thingy, the actual proper tool. Cliff, somebody get Cliff. Get Cliff for a free pro photo. Yes. Sir, are you in the back? Walk around that corner, grab Cliff. Hey. No, I don't want gaff tape. I want the proper thing. All right, but you're eating. I know. Well, I'm going to. Yeah, just go around and ask for Cliff. All right, we got it. We're getting Cliff. I don't want to use hack stuff on there. All right. All right, so my exposure clearly went up. 
I'm going to go to F8 to compensate for the removal of the dome. Oops. There we go. All right. Still a little hot. Also, we're, we're really warm. Cliff, I need the, uh, the bounce card. For this, for the, the C1, I want to use it as a flag. Oh. Clip, bounce card, thank you. Yeah, you got it. All right, so that's pretty good. It's a little hot, but again, he's going to move. So that's one exposure. Now, actually, you're a little too far to the, come this way slightly. Right there, so not too much. Come, 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 come like this. Right there, perfect. Got to use my rule of thirds. All right, so that's one spot. Your second spot, when you go over there, whoosh, then towards the flash, lean and look towards the flash. Go ahead, you can just go, yep. I'm gonna keep the one second exposure because it doesn't really matter. But now I got the flash turned on, I'm in TTL. He's looking all hard, oh. boom. Oops, well he's talking while I did it, sorry. Right, there we go. Oh, perfect, there we go, yeah. Oh, thanks Cliff. You're welcome. This is the bounce card. We're not gonna use it to bounce. Bounce is not meaning like leaving bounce, but like bounce is like. Good stuff, thank you. All right, so we're going to do that. So we can see that even with this, with the one second, we still have some residual light over here making them all blurry. Huh. The exposure's too long then, I guess? Are you using this as a continuous light? Yep, I am. Uh, I no? Just it. I won't go on there? I just ripped it. Yeah, uh, Sorry. don't break it. All right, there we go. We're flagging that off the background for some beauteous. Do we put the dome back in or no? Okay. I mean, no. I can if you want. Yeah, I do. I want to. More accessories, more money, right? We got to. Yeah. What? Yeah, just sure. All right, I'm going with that. Okay, so when you come this way, come a little bit forward, too, so you come out of that light. Uh, right here? Or, no, no, you're good there. Back, right. back up, back, back. And then when you come this way, come here, a bit come forward. Out. Yep. Okay. Watch your arm doesn't hit the tripod right here. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Let's just try that again. Okay, so I'm just going to check this exposure one more time. Stay still for one second. Oops, that's everything. That's with the flash too. Cool. So that's our mixed exposure, right? Now you come towards the flash. So go to second position with the flash. Good. All right. Well, this is just we're just going to check the exposure from this end. Okay. We got a little bit of blur there. So we're going to do lots of blur. There's going to be a long blur. So, but you can see where none of the constant light is hitting him on this side of his face. Right. He's sharp. He's even sharp here, right? But here he's blurry because the constant light's hitting him. It's one second, right? Now, the way to do this is rear curtain. I think it's probably going to be better. So you can do this two different ways. You can do first curtain or second curtain. We'll do first curtain first because that's how we do it. So we're going to start at the flash position. Over here? Yep. So hang on for a second while I explain this. Maybe we wouldn't lights up so I can explain. Sorry. I probably should explain what this is. So. So basically, when you're using flash, what happens is when you press the shutter button, the flash fires, right? Then, the, no, I'm going to start with the first curtain. Then your exposure happens, right? So if you were to photograph me with the flash, boom, it goes off. And then let's say there's one second left, and I took the camera and put it over here or whatever, and there was nothing over there, then nothing would happen because there'd be no exposure, right? It's nothing. If you do rear curtain sync, the exposure happens and then the flash fires. Okay, so depending on how you want to do it, for this is usually a little bit easier, I think, to use rear curtain. Uh, but we'll start with first curtain. So in other words, I'm going to start at the flash side. When the flash fires, he's going to move and then pause at the second shot. So once the flash fires, just get yourself in the second position. You know, you got one second, but yeah, let's turn those lights off. All right, here we go, and boom, go. Perfect. There you go, right? Beautiful. Yay. Done. Yay. This is probably the best one I'm ever going to do, so there you go. Now, the other way to do this is to go second curtain, meaning that we start at the, the hot light position, and then we go to the flash side. In order to do that, we have to set our camera for second curtain sync, which you do with the I button, with the little flash in the middle. Rear. There we go. OK. It's got a touch screen, very fancy. All right, so in order to do this properly, because remember, your camera's always gonna try to focus on the subject when you go to take the picture, I gotta put them in the first position, I gotta focus it, then I'll throw it in manual focus so it doesn't change, or keep your finger on it, right? Then I'll have moved back to the second position. 
All right, so go towards the flash side for me. Okay, good, hold. All right, so I'm focusing. And now that he's in focus, I'm gonna to switch to manual focus. Okay, now, now go to the, the hot side. Uh, too far, come back, come back right there. Okay, and then we're gonna make the shot, so when I say go, then go to the flash side, okay? Go. Oh, oh. we got the pre-flash though. So, still worked. Because I was in TTL, and you went a little too far. Okay, so what happened there? We can show two, actually, I'm sorry, I can turn the lights on again because I'm in the dark. So of course I did that on purpose to show you something. The first flash, you saw two flashes, right? You're like, Daniel, you fired it twice. That's the pre-flash, remember I talked about that earlier. The pre-flash is the flash that goes off before the flash, it's like an appetizer. Not really like an appetizer. It helps, it helps make the exposure, right? But you don't usually see the pre-flash in a long exposure, in a short exposure, because it happens so quickly, right? So that first thing wasn't really an exposing flash, it was a pre-flash. Yes? Yeah, you set your camera on second curtain, Yep. Right? Do you also set the setting to second curtain? So, well? right, so uh, we set the camera to second curtain, do we need to set the settings on the flash? It depends on your system. In Nikon, you just set it at the camera. In Canon, you just set it on the flash. Some other ones, you'd have to look in your book, basically. But yeah, it depends on the system. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna go wider with my, with my lens to give you more room to move, because, you know. You also got a pre-focus in here, right? I did, but it didn't go back to exactly the same spot. So we gotta get you back to the exact same spot when you come this way. That'll be the trick. That's yeah, gonna be right the hardest here, part, right? yeah. I went too far. Yeah, that'll be the trick. So I'm gonna do two things to make my life easier, because I like to make my life easier. I'm going to go to F11, which is gonna do two things for me. It's gonna give me more depth of field, right? To give Justin a little bit more room to, 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 to move because it's hard to land back in the exact same spot. Um, and it's also gonna give me more time, right? Because that means my, with this light, I can actually go to up to two seconds, really. But I'm gonna go one, yeah, I'll go two seconds. Right, now you get all the time in the world, right? Still go a little faster, okay. but, so uh, come over to this position, to your final position. Memorize that position, feel that position. I feel it. Feel it, get it in your blood. Oh. All right, let me pre-focus. All right, I'm focused. All right, here we go. Now, I switch to manual focus, go back to the hot light side. Oh, hold on, go back to that position again, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go a little wider, I forgot to do that. Go back to the hot light, uh, the, the flash side. I'm giving them more space, guys. With this, you're better off to not like miss their head, you know, so it's better to give them more space. Okay, so I'm focusing. I'm gonna focus there, okay. And now to the hot side. Boom, perfect. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna turn off TTL, so we won't get the pre-flash, so I'll just tell you when to go. Go. What happened there? He's pretty solid in both sides, why? Because I pressed the button, he didn't go right away, right? By doing it the way I did it, I told him when to go, I counted in my head like half a second, right? Is it sharp? Yeah, sharp enough. Right, that gave him he was frozen, right? And then I was like, go. Then he was like, oh, and he moved, right? So I gave him enough time to make an exposure on the other side. The faster he goes, the more blurry or the less detail he'll have on the hot side, right? So this is actually, you know, his movement, but it's sharp, right? So you got two exposures, that makes sense? And that really depends on just that part. So now if we can just get you further apart, I guess, now they have more space. So we can also do it like this. Let's do it where, it's gonna be trickier. <laughs> Nobody saw that. I just like that you cliff. said it's gonna be trickier and that happened right Yeah, now. little cliff, you know. <laughs> oh, cliff, we love you. All right, so. We'll put this back together. I think it's because on a tripod, it's not exactly the uh, ideal situation here, but we're making it happen. So this is what you meant by motion, not what yeah. I did last time. No. <laughs> moving. Yeah, that's right. Well, you're moving. <laughs> I dressed up for there, moving. No, I'll move the, but I'm the moving. Plate forward. Yeah. Well, it's hitting on hitting there, uh, so I don't think it matters. It's because it's on a tripod. All right, it's good enough. So what we're gonna do this time is you're gonna do a twirl. What? Yeah, you're gonna do this way, and then you're gonna be like, Finally get to be a star. Oh, my. We're going to give him faces on both sides. Yeah, your mom can see you through the back of her head. This is what we're doing. All right. Look towards this light. This light? Yeah, and then you're going to twirl. 
Look like towards the other light. Full twirl? Well, you got to oh, look at this light. You like blue steel the camera? No, not at the camera. No, no, to this way. Oh, that way. Well, because the idea here is all light on your face and then no light on your face. Oh. Meaning, meaning this being the light, okay? So you really just want me to come out of it? Boom, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Sure. That's what we want. Now, go back to your the finishing spot so we can pre-focus. So it's here, right? Yeah, a little too far, but that's good. Light. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's right perfect. Here. If you can be there. All right, I'm going to pre-focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, pre-focused. Nope, there we go. It does not want to focus. Here we go. Good. All right, now back to the hot side. And go. Oh, okay. Probably went too fast, but it's okay. Nope, and too far, but that's okay. It's we okay. get the idea. This is the first try. We didn't do too bad. We left a little too much space, so don't go quite as far. Yeah, so we're here. Yeah, you're really at the edge here. there. Yeah, well, actually, right here. This is good. Over here. Keep going right there. Stop. But when you go towards the hot light, don't go quite so far. Exactly. Perfect. Now put your. Oh, actually, leave your hand there. If you can go right to where your hand is, I'll just focus on your hand. That's Bam. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Perfect. All right. We're gonna focus on his him there. Blue steel. Blue All right. Steel. All right. Go back to the hot side. Be more alive than just being really, really ridiculous. And go. Looking. Boom. All right. All right. Well. That was completely unsuccessful. Are to be that just goes to show you. You blocked the whole stroke of your hand, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I actually, I like that you're so moody there, but let's try it without yeah, that. Yeah, take it without the hand. Huh? All right, yeah, no hand. <clears throat> to the same spot. Here. So go back to your flash side. All right, we're focusing. Good, hold. Okay, now to the hot side. All right, and go. All right, there we go. Right now he's further apart, like that. Same thing, and he's so you know I, I did this with the warm light so you guys can really see the difference because this light is by color so you can change it to warm cool, if you like. Okay, cool. Got that idea? Pretty simple, right? Just do a million of them until you get it right, and then you're good. But I don't have hair to fly or anything, so. Is that a shot of me? No, no, I'm saying I don't have that, so there's really nothing else to really focus on. All right, that's the basic concept. We're going to start. Okay, does that make sense? Do we understand that? Because that's, it's, it's super important because more so than getting this shot, which is just like, oh, it's a blurry shot of somebody moving, which is interesting, right? It's more about just understanding the, how you can make these two exposures work together. This could be anything. When Seth was shooting Boba Fett oh, yeah. at the uh -huh. studio, right? He did something like this by putting a, a light inside the gun, right? Yeah. And, then, and then he actually moved the camera, I think, how he did that one. But anyways... But basically making the light create like a laser beam, right? Once you understand that you're making these two exposures, you can do a lot of different things with it. You know, besides this. This could be fun for some stuff. There's certain things that it could be really dramatic for. You could use it for a movement or show dance or whatever. Just make sure that the, the real, uh, the, the important thing here is to make sure that your two exposures are far enough apart, right, that they don't affect, affect anything, right? Because if your hot light is pouring over into the flash exposure, then you won't get that nice frozen finish thing. It'll just look like a bunch of blurriness, right? You want that snap, that, that blur, that pop and blur, or blur and pop in the case of this. What's that? Settings. My settings are two seconds, F11. Uh, 26 millimeter lens, 100 ISO. That extra millimeter. Those, yeah, the extra two millimeters made all the difference right there. Okay, does that make sense so far, right? Another tip to this is your background needs to not get a lot of light on it. Remember I took this thing out and then Cliff made a big fool out of me by dropping it on the ground three times? Uh, the reason why we did this is because if light hits the background, then that background exposure will start bleeding through our subject. So it's not, you can't get this like good solid separation if your background is lit, right? You need that darkness of the background by either keeping light off of it or using, you know, like uh, velvet or whatever will also help. Okay. Oh, you want to know the settings again? Oh, man. In two seconds. F11. 26 millimeters. You're not even making a note. Okay. I'm just messing with you. Uh, 100 ISO. Okay, so what's important here is that, okay, so when we used to shoot film back on the dirt,
right? And we'd make Polaroids, right? We didn't write on them what I just told you there. What we'd write on is the ratio of the exposures based on the right exposure, right? So what our meter tells us, which means that actually the exposure is this and this are the same. It doesn't matter what it is. This, this needed to be two seconds because this light that I'm using, right? Unless you're in this space with this light at that position, that exposure means next to nothing, right? The idea is that this is the right exposure and so is this. And that you're giving your subject enough time to move. I went to F11 to give myself enough depth of field, right? I went to two seconds to give my subject enough time to move, right? If I made it a 30th of a second, he'd be like, and it still wouldn't be froze. You know, it's like, there's no way he wouldn't be able to move that fast, right? So that's the reason for the settings. What's important when you make notes of settings is why you're doing it, right? Much more so than the actual setting, right? Okay. That's, that worked. No? All right, maybe not. All right, so let's do a multiple exposure because I like that better. Pot and blur is fun, but multiple exposure to me is always a fun thing to do. So if you want to do a similar thing, right? Because we're making two, oh, ho, 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 ho. This flashes. All right. God love it. All right, here we go. This is the most well-gripped hockey puck in the entire, uh... all right. This C1 plus, oh, they're both on channel A. That's the problem. Let me change the channel. This is going to be channel C. Group C, I'm sorry. I will stop saying channel. All right, so I have now put this into group C. It actually flashes. I know, it's crazy. All right. Now, over here, we have a 500 watt second <laughs> strobe. All right. Over here, we have this. Okay. This is not going to be nearly as powerful. So we're going to have to compensate one way or the other. <laughs> I don't know, man. So, God love us, we're going to make this happen. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to one one sixtieth of a second because that is our sync speed. I am going to go to 100 ISO because why not? I'm going to turn off A. Yeah, I do this stuff live. All right, here we go. Let's see if this does anything. Oh, yeah, flash. Let's look at that. All right, oh, so. Wow. I'm going to change it. I'm a TTL. All right. As much as this dome makes light much more pretty, it's going to eat a stop. So we're going to take that off. All right. Let's see. What do you want, dramatic? Let's look right at the camera. Like, give, me, oh, give me the blue okay. steel. Blue steel? Blue steel at the camera. <laughs> the clip is going to kill me. All right. Oh, all right, all right, all right. that's not terrible. Uh, creepy blue steel. All right, all right, all right, that's not terrible. What's it set at? What's the set? Now, I don't know what the setting is. Hold on. Let's see what the setting is. Seven. That's not even all the ways up. Oh, my God. This one goes to 10, I'm guessing. All right. Hell, yeah. Let's turn it up all the way, then. So we're good. That's actually very good. Go all the way. All right. Blue steel. Just checking for you. All right. We're going to manual because we just turned it up. We're going to shoot it. At, uh, this is probably going to be a bit hot. Oh, geez. Wow, that was kind of bright, actually. OK, that's not terrible. That's almost Rembrandt. Don't even start. Uh, well, hold that on. little baby hair is in focus. Well, I also said, all right, hold on. Why is the? Whoa. Because this is a flashing LED, if you set the color temperature to the warmer, it will just be that temperature. Unlike a flash, which well, I didn't realize that because I hadn't done it before. That is nuts because that means you don't need gels. Well, that's totally worth it, right? Oh. I think so. All right, so let's see. Let's give some, some yeah, look towards the light like this, come this way. Perfect. Like a bad mama jamma. Oh, oh, actually, I think I'm still in manual focus. That looks really sad. Yeah, hold on one more time. It's like Blair Witch right there. Yeah, all right. Yeah, right at me. Look this way with your eyes. <laughs> there we go. All right, I was, I was in uh, manual focus before. There we go. All right, that's actually not terrible. All right, so good, good. This is very good. You know what we're going to do? 
No, this is happening. Wait, wait, wait. Can you just run for I'm going to do a thing for you, Seth, but I have to do something for me. No, I, I just want to see how much bounce you get off of this. Oh, all right, hold on. We are now using a pizza box. <laughs> and. As you can see by my face. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you want to see Seth do more stuff with pizza boxes on December 4th, we're going to do a joint demo. Well, I'm also doing a stage demo in Nashville. Why did you get fired? I don't know. What are you doing? What does Nashville have to do with what? No, it's uh, you, the pizza box broke it. Oh, wow, there you go. Okay. Oh, not bad. Okay. This is the bonnet, the much maligned bonnet. Yeah, we never tried this, right? So what, we, what we can do is relax it. Oh, yeah, we could do that. I was going to take it my hand. All right. You got a ball head, man. <laughs> I don't think there's enough space on this ball head for this. I, I, I this is not it, the right it, way to I get got, a handhold. I got it, I got it, I got it. All right. We're, we're losing the tripod. No, not watch. Nobody's carrying this giant watch, tripod. Watch, watch. Oh, all right, all right, hold on. Uh, Maybe they are. Oh, whoa. Look at that, Colorado tripods. Colorado. Tripod. All right. This is a bonnet. <laughs> you know what? It's actually going to work. Hey, it is going to work. Working. That's what's said about you. nearly blinded me there. Okay. So, we're going to make a couple changes here. I know it's going to work. No, 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 no. I don't want to use that lens. I'm not going enough power. All right. 50 mil. We're going to go. All right, kids, we're doing it. We're going more open than F4. Oh, boy. I know it's crazy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Listen, if you want to have a lot of Instagram followers, you guys shoot wide open. Hold that for me. Good. <laughs> Got it. That's the trick. This is 50. 51.8? Yep, switch to the 51.8. All right. 51.8. Oh, I'm sorry. Kicking my tripod. Kicked your tripod. I'm going to open up to F2. Never open up all the way. That's just showing off. <laughs> I'm going to put the light in a more... I am not using the strip. Who needs a Profoto B10 when you have a C1 Plus? That's perfect like that. Look all dreamy. Here we go. Oh, I'm in manual. I should have adjusted that. That's, that's, that's okay. All right, going to TTL. Here we go. We're getting enough juice. Oh, mm, all right. The bonnet's really eating it. Well, it's not full power. I'm in TTL. I should have kicked it up. Well, actually, let me just do this. Yeah, throw, put it in manual. Give me full power. You want 10? Uh, yeah, let's go for it. You're in it. No, with the whole face. There we go. That's, hmm. that's not bad light, man. Terrible. Not terrible. I'm actually going to give me up. Uh, you know what? I said not to do it, but we're going to 1.8. Here we go. Focusing. This is it. Boom. That's That's not... Terrible. Now, once you've set up this whole shot with your C1 Plus and you're feeling good about it, now you can break out the B10. B, 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 B. All right, here we go. Give me that dreamy face again. The dreamy face? Yep. You know what? I think actually... What? Well, I have the dome in there as well. No, I think it being on constant actually stays with the strobe and you actually get a Oh, so it pop and blur. Well, no, I'm thinking it'll be sharper without the cost light. Oh, yeah, yeah, there without you go. Without the cost light, it's sharper. Oh, that makes sense. So when you go into this, watch. You go in here. And see that? All right, so what happened here uh, is I left the constant light on so I could see it better. But because my exposure now is 1.8, it was starting to pick up that constant light and adding some blur to it. So even at 1 one sixtieth of a second, uh, you can still get blur of somebody moving, you know, especially when you're that close to them. So killing that uh, modeling light is nice. That is not terrible. I know. Oh, 
Cliff, I want to make fun of you, but it actually it's working. All right. I'm getting rid of all my stuff. I'm just going to have the bonnet and the... the that's it. Uh, this is always... The tripod <laughs> made good life. The tripod, the tripod is... The made the whole Colorado tripod and the bonnet. Okay, so we, we have this now, right? So we know we can do this. The only problem here is I'm not going to be able to do multiple exposures the way I want to like this because I'm not going to shoot it at 1.8. It's not going to give me enough depth of field, right? This is the thing, right? You can make, I mean, decent shots with just about anything if you understand light, right? We know that... You know, shaping Justin's face in this way with this light is working, right? It's pro photo, so it's automatically good, right? So, <laughs> you know, so, and it's sharp, and it's because it's Nikon, so there you go. So that works, right? We can do it. It's like, oh, wow, I did this with this. But, you know, we want to do something, we want to have more control, we want to have more power. This is where using different powers of lights come in, because that's one thing people always ask me. They're like, how much power of light do I need? Is this enough? Is that enough? It kind of depends on what you're doing, right? If you need to shoot at more closed down apertures, at lower ISOs, if you're in bright spaces where you want to control it, you need more power, right? This is not going to do anything if we were standing in the street during the day. Like, that's nothing, right? This is perfect like this, because we can control the space, right? Where you're, in a, you're at a party, like I said, or whatever. You can make a quick portrait of somebody, hold it, and that's pretty decent. I still want this to be like flowered or something. I don't know. Anyways, all that being said, pretty cool. You can also use your phone which I'm not gonna do, but you can actually shoot with your phone with this thing. So if you wanna do that, you can do it. Um, but let's actually get into a multiple exposure. Any questions before we move on? That was kind of advanced. I'm curious, could it stay yeah. up? Will it stay up? Oh, it does stay up. Oh. oh, well if I take the bonnet off so we have more juice, we could probably do, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna go to a regular light. I've experimented enough. Do you want to put it down? Yeah, I'll put it to the side, yeah, thank you. This is an A1, right? This is a small A1. This is a small flash, like a, a speed light, if you want to call it, right? The world's smallest speed light, or whatever they call it. World's smallest studio. So, so this right here is way more powerful than the lights that are light in the space, than this C1. It's a flash, right? It's an actual flash. So we can use this to make a multiple exposure much easier because... I'm gonna fire this guy up. Uh, no more, right? No more, yeah. All right, let's see. All right, so, air, on, head, on. All right, there we go. So this is now flashing. If I want, it's up to the C group. Was that in the C group? It was, right, so that's good. I'll use C group. Uh, I need a light stand. Okay. We've got our small flash. We want to do a multiple exposure. You're already getting in there, ready to go. You know where to go? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Come on, do it. All right, hold the flash. We've got that flash, right? We're going to do a similar thing to what we did with the pop and blur, except we're going to use the, the, the flash instead. So let's get to... Yeah, right on F11. So I think I'm going to go down to F11. So instead of giving him uh, two seconds, I'm only going to do one second. And the reason why I'm going to do one second is because I want it to be darker in here. Because I know two seconds we're going to start picking up some of the light. Let me just do a shot to see what it looks like. Oop. Okay, that's you, right? So now we see that with the flash... That's odd. See, with the flash, right, we're getting basically, uh, oh, you can't even see it there. We're going to get a proper exposure at F11. Even at one second, he's going to be frozen. What we're going to do is we're going to position him in two spots. So let's get your first spot going. Sure. Oh, I need my other lens. We got ahead of ourselves here. The other rule with the fast lens is don't use it for every shot. You want to make it feel special. You have to thank it. Thank you for all my Instagram views. See how dirty my sensor is after this? What? We'll see how dirty my sensor is after this. This place is, but the AC kicking is probably gonna. All right. Murals, bro. Huh? 
mirrorless, bro. It is mirrorless. There is no mirror. Okay. Wide angle lens back on, so we have room to move, right? We said 26 millimeters? All right, good. Lean this way for me. Too far? Right there? Okay, so if we, is that gonna be comfortable? Yeah. All right, that's one spot for you. Come this way. Good, too far? Right there, good. Okay, so if we just do this, Towards the, there you go, stay hold. This is still firing. I know. What do we get? Common kind of a Robert Downey Jr. thing, right? Uh, they both went off. That's not a multiple exposure. Daniel, what are you doing? Why? Because this is going to fire both flashes at the same time. The only way, well, not the only way, the only way I know of to do flashes with a multiple exposure like that with time difference would be to use something like a pocket wizard that's designed for that. It can put a delay on a flash. But because I don't have that with me, we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, right, right Cliff? By the way, Cliff? Yes. C1 plus plus bonnet. Come on. Oh, yeah, you missed that. Bonnet on a C1 plus. Yes, I don't have a bonnet. We did it. That's what I made that shot with. Yeah, very nice. That doesn't suck. That doesn't suck. There you go. All right. Here we go, A1. If you, what do they get with the A1, a free battery? They get a free battery with the A1, even online? I, I can't hear what you're saying, I'm standing out here, I got the Do they get a free battery with the A1, even online? Yes. All right, you, bought, you buy an A1, get a free battery, and? You get the A1, you get a free battery, and a grid kit. And a grid kit. What? And you get the, and you get the dome with it for free, it's the part of it. The grid kit's dope. The, and, the the grid kit. and the wide angle's built in, yeah. All right. So in order to do this the old fashioned way, what we have to do is make it not fire with the radio, right? We got to fire it with what we call your finger. Your finger. Okay. okay. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. All right. Let me see you do it. Yeah, that worked pretty well. Let me see you do it again. No, you keep turning it on and off. Just touch it quickly. There you go. Yeah, but turn it off because that's a trigger too. No, I noticed. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to turn the air off. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to turn the air off. Not the air conditioning, but the air meaning the uh, remote. Oh, God. Oh. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, nice. All right, so don't look directly at the flash. Nope, never do that. So because I don't want to be the one to screw it up, I'm going to have my flash fire with the radio, and then, your finger. Yeah, my finger right. you're supposed to say your name now. And Fernando. Fernando, Fernando is going to fire it with his finger. <laughs> if this shot sucks, <laughs> it's Fernando's fault. Fernando. Now, so Fernando told one. me that he's done this before. One and two? Or... Yeah, exactly. So come to position one. So I'm going to go into first curtain because I want to fire first because, you know, I feel like I'm more important. I'm going to go into manual. Let me just see what it looks like with just my flash. We're just going to shoot my flash. Don't do anything. Okay. Okay. That was still second curtain. There we go. Oh, because you do it inside the camera. Uh, nope. That's not how you do it. Touch screen. It's like playing Pac-Man over here. Okay, good. All right. We make a photo, right? Why is this? Okay, okay, here we go. Focusing. You're in focus and boom. Well, oh. Fernando, <laughs> luckily you screwed up, so nothing happened. If Fernando doesn't fire his flash, this is what we get. A beautiful shot made by me. Oh, no, you fired it, all right. You fired it, but guess what? Three Too minutes? slow. Too slow. Too slow. <laughs> I'm giving you exactly one second. Now, what has to happen here is Justin is going to move as soon as the flash fires, get himself here, do the perfect expression. 
And then at that moment, Fernando is going to fire his flash. All of this is solely based on the skill of Fernando. <laughs> we have faith in you. That's why I'm not doing it. All right, so. All right. All right, here we go. When the flash fires, you're going to move, and then Fernando's going to fire, but he's not going to wait 17 seconds, is he? <laughs> How long is Fernando going to wait? One second. Not even one second, because you have to fire it before that. Nine tenths of a second. Start counting as soon as it goes off. As soon as you see that flash, hit it. All right. No, no, no. He's got. He's got a reaction time. No, he's fast. All right, and here we go. Go, boom. That was better. Oh. And that's how Fernando does it, right? The two sides of Justin. <laughs> the power's too high. That is not terrible. If you could move further. <laughs> What do you think? The bonnet shot's good. You know, like oh, the yeah, bonnet? that was a good one. Yeah, the yeah. bonnet. It was all the bonnet. Though. The bonnet is the way. Okay. So, all right, here we go. That did you turn it down for? Him? No, I put the dome on it. To oh, dome. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so we yeah. wanted to, it was it was a bit bright. I got it down. All right, you're in the right spot, right? I'm just gonna go like this to give myself some more space. All right, here we go and go. Oh, too fast, I think. If you do it too fast, then you're gonna get that, which isn't terrible. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. But really, we want his face to separate. So you gotta, you gotta land that pose before you shoot it. Don't get, uh, you know, a little premature there, Fernando. Right. You gotta nail that expression and go. That felt better. That is a weird face, though. All right. Yeah, that is ambient, right? Yeah. All right. Let's go to F16. We got more power. Okay. I'm gonna go to F. What, well, how much you got? You got two stops? I got, two, I got three stops. I'm going to go 22. You're going to go 22, so yep. you want to go uh, Two stops. Okay. All right, we're going up two stops, roughly. All right, I actually didn't look at what that was set up before I started turning it, so God only knows. All right. All right, lean a little bit more this way. This is F22. We're just going to do a test shot. You got to actually physically move, though, otherwise oh, yeah. you're just going to get the side side. I mean, it's not terrible, but the exposure's right. And, and you made a good expression. Now, if only you had moved. If only your subject was good. Subject. Your drama mask. Come a little this way. Here we go. Good. Oh, Fernando's down. But just went out of frame. I'm going to do this. Let's do it again. I'm going to give you a little more space. I think we need that 26 millimeters. Let me go. I'm just moving too far. I'm coming down 26 millimeters. You got it. Come a little more this way. Good. And. No, 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 but at least you're in the frame because I went for the 26. Let me try to flash him in the middle. Oh, you're going to flash him in the middle. You want to try it? I do, but first I would like Justin not to screw this up. Actually, before we do this, can we just do one thing? Get that weird thing out? No, no, you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the C-stand? Let me see, let me see. Is that the Colorado? No, it's a C-stand. <laughs> let me see, let me see your, uh, your close position. So you want me closer here? Well, no, 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 you're good. Get, get, oh. get how you're going to be. I'm going to adjust the camera. Do that. Yeah. All right. There's a C stand back there that's kind of ugly. Uh, but I guess I can move it. Fernando, you should be on top of this stuff. Okay. Let me see the first position. Right here. And I'm going uh, over here. That's too far. That's too. So it's just here. Right? Yep. Just literally. Boom to there. Boom, boom. Yep. Get that full haircut in me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> And good. Oh, really fast, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. All right, all right, all right, here we go. All right. Getting good focus in there, the dreamy eyes. Here we go, and go. All right, that felt good. That felt good. Okay, now let's get a middle flash. I'm going to do it from underneath. Oh, un underneath. So yeah, be a little creepy as you're moving your hair. Be creepy as I'm moving my hair. Yep. This is that okay. pull, this is that pull, right? I got the facial hair for yeah, it. So. Do it. Ready? All right, first position. And go. No. Ooh, you did it simultaneously, which gave him a fill light. I gave a fill light. So if you want to come to Seth's fill light demo, this is basically it. This, it doesn't fire until <laughs> you release. Oh. So that's new. So it fires see. upon release. It's like a, like a grenade. All right, all right. All right. We're going to do this. All right, here we go. We got this. 
All right, now, Fernando, here's the thing. I know you've been nailing it. I think it's dead. Cliff, we need another one. My eye lines off too, so I need to be here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that would be so much better. Because you're firing it, so by the time I fire it. Oh, you in TTL? All right. No, this is on that remote. So disconnect it. Change the channel. Where is it? It's right here. So just go boop and just change it to like eight or something. Okay. You got to wait till Seth fires his. This is going to be the key here, right? We're a team. Team Fernando. What channel are you on? Seven. I'm on two. Are you doing it? Manual? Of course. I'm not standing here holding the light, though. I refuse. Well, no, that's why well, you're here, then. <laughs> Voice-activated light stands? No way. All right, who wants to be Cliff? I mean, everybody no, wants to be Cliff. Nobody wants to be Cliff? You want me to use this instead of this? Is that no, Cliff wants us to use that. Oh. No, I don't care. You use whatever you want, man. I don't give a damn. Before this, he was like, you We're only live. Team. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, we are? We'll, oh, we'll use, let's use the A1. We'll, we'll use the here, A1. Here, use this. You got it. You want to use the A1? Do it. All right. I love that thing, but we'll use it for something else. So I'm going to take it off of your channel again. Yep. I'm going to leave this on as a constant light just to make this terrible. Oh, great. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we could do that. But it's not, as, it's not as strong as that one. So at F22, this is like doing nothing. So for eye line right here is good, right? Yes, except for your head's in the wrong spot. Okay. So there. Here, and then eye line's good. Yeah, even further. Right here. Yep, and then that's, that's actually a very good eye line. Okay. So right, go I go back to the first eye spot. I line here, and I got my eye line over here. Yeah. Okay, here we go, and boom, go. It affects your flesh. <laughs> You'll notice the beautiful specular highlight on his hair caused by me. One more. We got it. He's not getting that C1 back. All right. All right, here we go. What, what number are you at? Nine. Nine. All right, I'm going to do like seven, so it's like some. All right, Seth's on seven. Oh, whoa, what? There you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, so go from, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did a different expression. You did. Looks like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, except do the opposite. It would be better, it'd, it's better if you end mean. You're welcome. You, that's what I did. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it, it, we're going to do it backwards. We're gonna go rear curtain. Oh, you want me to we're go gonna we're gonna rear curtain it. Not mean. Yeah, or? exactly. Yes, mean, mean into not mean. Into can not you do that? Okay. Is it easier to do it know. rear curtain or can you do it from here? Do you have range? Uh, what's what's my objective? Your objective would be to be mean here and then happy here. Oh, happy can do, here, mean here. Yep. Can you do that? Ready? All right. Let's see it. No, back to your other spot. <laughs> Come on. You got to start with the mean though. Oh, mean here. No, no. Oh, mean start here. here. Yep. All right. Here we go, guys. Because I'm lazy, I'm making them do it this way. And go. You have, you have to stretch away from me yeah. to the final one. Like, you have to get closer to him. You, we, oh, you want me yeah. closer to him? Yep, we need more, more sweep. More sweep. All right, here we go. This is the one. And go. <laughs> this is worth it just for your expression change. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to watch him do that is worth it. To me. All right. All right. Let's do it with rear curtain, though, right? Because a lot of times people are like, well, why? Let's put a color on this one. Let's okay, green. Between. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do it with rear curtain, because a lot of times people are like, why do you use rear curtain, the first curtain? And I can be like, use it because whatever. But sometimes it's worth it trying both to see what works better. I think if you start off happier and then get mean, sure. I mean, I should say, you're going to start off mean, then get, you're going to start off happy, then get mean, just like you did here. Okay. But we're going to rear curtain sink it. So happy. <laughs> That's right. All right, so rear curtain. So I'm going to say go to you. You're not going to see the flash fire, okay. okay? Fernando, do not screw this up. Come this way slightly. Good. All right. Focusing. All right, I'm actually doing this wrong. Turn towards where Fernando's going to be. Get your final spot in. Too far. Well, remember your eye line. Oh. So eye line Over here, there. eye line here. And you can go further, but be, yeah. Right here. Yeah, lean further with your body. I right there. Yep. And I line there. Exactly. There. Right. Stay there. I'm going to focus on you. Oh, sure. Remember, you want to focus on where they're going to end up, because that's where he's theoretically going to be the sharpest. OK, now go back to your to starting position. And remember, you're, you're happy to mean. And go. That's not bad. Yeah, that actually worked. <laughs> yeah, I should mention that. That, right, you were being fired by the, the right, that, that I fired this one at the end. 
We did it backwards. I like the Jekyll Hyde thing, John. Me too. So still happy? No. So mean I'm going to fire this one okay. manually. We're kind of doing... We're doing all manuals. We're doing our next week's demo already. No, we're not. <laughs> Screw the remote. All right, here we go. What? We're not going to use the TTL or anything. We're just going to do it. All right, I need one more person. <laughs> what? Because we I want somebody shot, to fire guys. this flash. Come on, I need another person. Far. Let's go. Yeah. All right, we're going to kill the remote. You know why? Because it was only $400. It's the cheapest thing on the set. Let's not use it. All right. <laughs> Fernando's the cheapest. You're going to fire that thing. The white button. The white button, exactly. Good. It's good that you asked that, because not the red button that explodes if you do that. All right, turn towards Fernando. Let me lock in my focus. This is the one. I'm going to throw this on my Instagram tonight, get so many views. I'm going to tell you, well, not I'm not going to tell you go yet, because you're in the ending position. Focusing. OK, now go back to the starting position. Oh my god. OK, no, no, I'm good. Go. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. What did you do there? <laughs> I hit the button. <laughs> God only knows what happened in that shot. <laughs> <laughs> However, let's go back to using the remote. So, what did we learn there? Just what, 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 what did we learn there? <laughs> All right. We're doing first curtain sync. I don't know where we're at anymore. Let's get a green one. We got this. So, again, you're going to fire when he turns towards you. We're back to first curtain. I'm going to focus. God only knows what we're doing here. Oh, I didn't know you were going. I didn't, I didn't know, know you were know going. You. Uh, you didn't say anything. I, I went like this. <laughs> you didn't say anything. We're gold. I went like this. Stone. <laughs> what does this mean? It means, <laughs> oh, behave? What do you think this means? <laughs> if say everyone is something. paying attention. All right. Use your words, man. That Use is your words. the most glorious shot. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right. All right. That ending shot was actually really good. Seth, could you fire one last time? I don't even know how many times I've I know, I know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the important thing here is to. Oh, what are you doing? I haven't done anything yet. I'm sorry. I just saw a flash. <laughs> I, I just know. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta tell me to go. All right, all right. Everyone get on your mark. Let's go. Come on. All right. I kind of want to see what happened if you did that, and that's scary. All right. All right that is very on. scary. Come on, come on. Whew. All right, guys. The cold mist is kicking in. Here we go. I'm focusing. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say go. Okay, and go. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is basically put that on Tinder. He's not he wasn't pointing at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Enough mucus in your mouth. I got like the alien thing. <laughs> Fernando, that's all you did. <laughs> that's literally all you did. <laughs> it's epic, but it's really all you did there. <sighs> okay. Should we try it one more time? I think we got it. Oh, no, he wants to do it again. Somebody else shoot it. Come shoot. All right. I'm sitting down. We've reached that point in the, the, the session. OK. Yeah, I'm trying here. Let's see if you guys learned anything. What do you think? Are they going to figure it out? Yeah. All right, so does he have a timer? It's one second. Just once you make the picture, tell him to go. It didn't look like it fired, no. You didn't, you didn't actually take a picture. It was, it, was, it was cool to watch you guys do that, but uh, no picture happened there. What is that supposed to mean? I make a picture every single time. Is this guy insulting me over here? Heckler, heckler in the front row. Oh, boy. You broke the camera already? <laughs> 
Well, it's, if it's not focusing, it won't fire. Yeah, I know. Because I have it on focus priority. Oh. So get them over to, get Justin, going to your first position. When it turns green, it's focused. And then fire. I mean, not as good as mine, but, you know, try again. <laughs> Fernando, man, you're letting Seth overpower you. Do you want to try the, the green and the, and the air? Oh, yes, I like that idea. Yeah, I agree. Here, take away my one job. Yeah. Hey, if you could fire one less time, Seth. It's only allowed to be used by union photographers, so I don't know. <laughs> you want this one still? No. Oh. Sorry. I have an idea. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you? Over here needs it why don't you put? Why, why don't you put another color on that one? Yeah. Maybe a paler green, so it goes deeper, or possibly red for contrast. You want to do a holiday theme? What do you want to do? Yeah. Holiday theme. Holiday theme. Which holiday? Christmas music starting. It's Thanksgiving. So fall colors. Do we have to adjust the power of the light? Yeah, probably. No. The gel is definitely going to eat some light. I don't, it was a little hot anyways, so I don't think we have to worry about it. I do not know how much light the gel eats. There is actually a chart. And speaking of that, oh, I don't want to get up again. All right, let's do this. Let's go, Daniela. Um, 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 yeah, yeah, no, this is, could you guys, could you alternate fire? Like you fire one, then you fire yeah, one. Yeah, we're so coordinated already. That's going to happen. I mean. What are we, Rockettes? Get over here. That would be, that would be pretty awesome. Actually, instead of doing that, why don't we add one more flash of a different color and everybody will fire in sequence. Cliff, we need another flash. Here, make this bicolor. Make that this is orange. not. This is not powerful enough. What are you talking about? This is the only light you ever need. We don't have a bonnet. <laughs> Hold on. Every tool has its purpose. That is not the purpose of that one. That is true. All right. So, what's what do you set at? What do you set at? Power wise. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. It's a seventy-five watt second light. So that's. 20-ish watt seconds. All right, so that's going to be, that's good. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's, nope, not enough. That, nope. There we go. Okay, you ready? This is expensive. It's not mine, though, so I don't care. What could do is run that from the back constant the whole way through. Well, I'm going to do that with the, that's what I'm going to use that for, locking oh, lock. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, yeah, now yeah, 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 you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, each tool has its job. No, I want to do three pops. So we're going to go pop. Pop, pop, pop. That's four pops. All right, good. All right, let's just do a quick test shot. Just fire it once. I just want to see what mine's doing. Uh, okay, a little more power on mine. Okay, here we go. So she's going to fire it. Then I'm going to shoot mine. Then Seth's going to shoot his once. And then uh, Fernando. All right, yep. go. Well, I think we simultaneous. Uh, we need more time. Right, I'm gonna shut the light off. We're gonna get a long. Well, we need we need more time. We're not stretch, giving enough time. Stretch it out to like three seconds. Three seconds, Seth says. One, two, three. I need I mean, two. That's there like some go. cool animorph stuff going, man. All right, here we go. No, three seconds. So go slowly You're and do transform. A documentary, and this is like gonna be. This. <laughs> so transform My slowly. God. Three seconds to go across. My friend Dahmer over here. All right, go. Oh, I was a little slow on mine. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you were slow. You, all right, one more time because I screwed up. I kind of screwed that one up. Yeah, you can go a little slow. You got three seconds. Oh, I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, I fired first. I fired. Yeah. Oh, there you yeah, go. There we go. We got it. Transformation. See, I had yeah. enough time. That, that was, was good. For that. Don't clap for that. That's fine. Don't clap. It's okay. That was a progression. That was progression. That, that, now, just to finish this off. Oh, finally. <laughs> Where's that C1 puck? We're going to do constant. Let's do a constant light. Who here is, is limber? 
You're limber? All right, well, there you go. OK. Behind him, you're going to go like this. All right. Give him the puck. Let's do it. Don't screw it up. For me? Yep. Don't screw it up? No, no, you, you, you're nailing it. Limber oh, over here. Cool. All right, little, little, little twirls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right behind him, right? OK, good. You're just follow him with it. Well, I like twirls, though. I'm well, fur, him. furlough him with twirls, yeah. Now I got more time. Three seconds I got here, right? <sighs> Three seconds. OK. Uh, Ready? Go. Huh. Hey, well, there's a hand in there. <laughs> yeah. He should be behind his head. Yeah, behind, keep your hand right behind his head. You got to get down. Okay. Like, get down. We can't see you at all. Get down. Okay. Down on your knees. All right, or squat, however you want to do it. I don't want to. Uh, all right. Well, keep your hand right behind his head. Well, the flash is hitting his head. Uh, no, directly behind his head, right? Is there something? Yeah. Yeah. Like that? Okay. Right you don't have to swirl anymore. Right, but it's not yeah. focusing now. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, go. All I hear is cellophane going on around here. No. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we'll delete that part of the tape. Yay! We got it. Okay, perfect. Woo! Amazing. Just point at the oh, all right, all right, you're out of business. Seth fired you. <laughs> hold, it, hold it, hold right here. Right here. And then just move it at axis, all right? Sure. Oh, but it doesn't change color, do you, see though, okay. in the, do you see it in the lens? Do you see the no. light? No, it's no, a flare, it's, though, probably. Yeah. Tilt it up a little bit and flare us. There you go. Three, two. But it's not focusing. Well, you may, you turn you the light down close. a little bit until you get a focus. You might be too close. Tilt, tilt the light down a bit. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Get it right on his eyeball. Focus. How are you moving there? I think he's How too close. Oh. oh, boy. No, he's good. Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what happens when you screw up. All right, yeah, so yeah. All right. All right. All right, ready? Go. Ah. Right. We will never get back to the past glory. No, it's my fault. Once we get the focus, then turn it up. Okay. We want to flare the lens. Okay. I hear you. Right here? And then you just want me up here? Yeah, a little, not that much, though. So. Okay. A little more? Point it at the lens. There, there, there. Yeah. All right, go. I think you're jumping me, man. Probably. Yeah, I think we went simultaneous. You filled me. Put her right here for a second, and then just do the rotation. All right? Okay. Do you, do you see the light in the lens? All right, good. Yeah, I like that. All right. Just Don't jump me. Nice. All right, go. Fernando, did you even fire? Yeah. What happened? Oh, you did, okay. We got a lot of extra. Oh, uh, see, I'm not liking the hot light because we're getting that extra air. All right, so forget it. All right. Forget all that. All you right. get the idea of that junk. All right, so forget that. We'll delete that. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah! Uh, oh, yeah! Uh, okay, good, good, good. Wait, 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 wait. Right. Uh, and then it's sharp. Look at that. Nikon sharp. Not even Canon sharp. All right. Okay, guys. Let's. Look at that. Even sharp over here. Look at that. The glint. The glint. The glint is sharp. Overhead lights, maybe? That one's going up in my gram. Thanks, guys. Okay, so. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. <laughs> Fernando, excellent. There you go, you get it. Oh, yeah, you can't keep that. That's mine, you can't keep it. You can have clips. Okay, guys. I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> but hopefully you're getting this, uh, the idea here that once we use our flash, to basically give us control of the space, we can make as many exposures and as varied of exposures as we like, right? We can do, uh, you know, these solid exposures, right? With none of the constant light affecting our shot, every one of the flashes is gonna be sharp, assuming they're in focus, right? When we use the constant light, we get the blur. We can use that to any extent that we want to create various things, you know, like we, we colored the lights, we did whatever. You can do a lot of different things with this. Again, this in and of itself is just a technique figure out a reason to do it, right? I mean, maybe this is for some, this actually was pretty cool because it could be like a teen wolf 
Wolf. Not really Teen Wolf. wolf. <laughs> Teen Wolf. Wasn't it a movie from Teen, the... Teen Wolf? Teen Wolf. Teen, Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. Yeah, it's like a serial killer. But, you know, you could, you could do these different techniques uh, mixed in with other stuff to make it work with certain characters. But the idea here is really, when you're using Flash, to think of it beyond just your basic exposure, right? Because coming in and taking your softbox, like we did last week, and making a proper exposure is awesome. Once you can master that, doing these extra things are going to give us uh, more variety in what we can do and, and more kind of, again, ways to create things in camera, which are going to be, make your client be like, oh, that's awesome. Instead of, well, let me take a few different pictures of you, then make one green and make one. That you could do that if you enjoy doing a lot of posts, but getting it in camera, there's something special about that, right? It's a little imperfect. Um, and kind of unique, right? We didn't get one shot when we did this that was exactly the same, right? And that's kind of the point. Each one has its own life, as the energy of us doing it. I will say, if you have certain types of equipment, like Pocket Wizards I mentioned, like Pocket Wizards Multimax, you could actually time this and do it exactly the same every time if you wanted to, because you could, and you could have like a, you know, a dancer or music playing so that he could stay to the beat. He could actually move and we could repeat it if we needed to. So there is ways to do that. Maybe that's another class, but we'll, we'll do that yeah, another time. Repeat it for multiple models in the same session. Yeah, you could do it with multiple models in the same session. There's lots of things that you could do, right? So this, is just a, this class is really designed to kind of open you, your, your imagination to different things that you can do with Flash. I did want to do one other thing, which do we have time? There's one other thing that you can kind of do. We, we say this all the time, uh, but when you are using Flash, right, the, is assuming that none of the other light in the space is affecting your shot, right? So assuming that we're in... We'll go back to TTL. my gel, bro. I didn't rip it. Oh, Fernando did Fernando, that. Fernando, yeah, well, man. Fernando. Never trust Fernando. a guy named Fernando. You are a union guy. Look yeah. He doesn't care. Gels are expendable, just like paper. Although I only get one roll of paper a year, but you know, that sort of thing. All right, let me see you one more time, Justin. Yes, sir. So, if we take Justin, with all that we got going on, don't get that close. All right. I can zoom in. All right, we're gonna chop up the top of his head because that's the proper way to do it. And make a photo, right? There we are, we're back at the beginning again. So people who came late, that's the beginning. If I take my meter, this meter in particular, the Speedmaster, it's called the Speedmaster, the Speedmaster. This actually has something that can measure what they call flash duration. So when none of the light in the space is affecting your shot, like this, right, we just made that photo. Jump on that spot again. If I turn the flash off, remember this from the beginning, right? That's what it looks like with no flash, right? There, right? If you're in this situation, the flash duration becomes your shutter speed. So if I use my meter in flash duration mode and I measure the flash power, the flash duration here, okay? Let's do it again. It's always good to do these things a couple times, just to make sure it's getting a good reading. Yep, all right, got the same reading. Okay. See that? 2,110, right? That is effectively my shutter speed. So if I'm trying to stop action without knocking things over, Boy, I am like a cowboy there. Yeah, yeah. If, I'm, if I'm trying to stop action, right? My, my camera set at 1 160th of a second, but my actual shutter speed for the, for the purpose of making a shot right there is over 2,000th of a second, right? So not only am I eliminating all the light in the space, I'm also shooting with this super stop, uh, this uh, super powerful thing that can stop action, right? I can stop my action like of splashing water or of just in moving or whatever, right? Even at one 160 of a second. Now in theory, it doesn't, doesn't get dark enough in here to really do this, but if I went to like, uh, you know, a one second and I shot and I got a black frame, then, and I got that for my flash duration, it still would be my shutter speed. I could take the photo, he could move around for the whole second, he would be 100% frozen because that's what the flash does. Now, some flashes don't have very good flash duration, right? I mean, so it, they're not all the same. And depending on, but all of them generally are gonna be much faster, faster than any constant light you're gonna use. So to crank up your ISO, to be able to shoot at a fast shutter speed, you know, for, just for the purpose of being able to stop motion, it, with the constant light just doesn't make sense when you can use a flash, even a small flash, to be able to stop the action very easily using the flash duration. And it's, and it's correlated to the power setting. Well, yeah, and it also depends on the power of the flash. So generally the lower the setting of your flash's power, the shorter the flash duration will be. So that's something to keep in mind. 
So I'm doing something like this. If I'm doing splashes, one of the best ways to do a splash, well, I haven't done splashes all the time, is you, you literally put it, the light behind, like right up behind your subject so that you're shooting into the light, and then you turn it all the ways down. You can still get your like F11, F16 uh, on, the, on the subject and have a tremendously short flash duration. Because if I was to turn this down all the way, because right now it's at uh, five, it's about half power. If I turn it down all the way, the flash duration will be much, much, should be much shorter. These fluorescent lights are messing with it, actually. No, there we go. Yeah, because it keeps, uh, yeah, uh, almost fuller. 8,000 of a second, right? Can you read that? Yeah. 8,710, right? That's all the ways turned down. So that's flash duration. That's what it is. We mention it all the time, so now you can actually see it in action. If you buy this light meter, you could measure it, which could be important if you're doing certain things. Like, even that 2,000 of a second, that's not fast enough to stop like a dancer, right? Somebody flying through the air with like long hair, 2,000 flash duration is not gonna stop it. You're gonna need to flash with even shorter flash duration. And that's why some flashes cost more money and that's what they have. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Did this kind of open your mind to things? Or are you like, oh God. So on December 4th, which is two weeks from now, doing a demo with Seth. We've never actually done a demo together, I don't think. We're going to collaborate and create something, kind of like what we just kind of did, except probably, you know, more, well, we'll see. It'll be the same thing. You already saw it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'll, be, it'll be the same thing. Um, we're going to just create, right? Because one of the best things you can do as a photographer is get together with other people that are interested in photography and just work together and bounce ideas off each other and see how other people think and work. It really helps you grow to see what, what somebody else would do. And don't be so caught up in the idea of like, no, no, this is my photo. I don't want to listen to what you're saying over there. You know, like, try it. Why not, right? Get involved. Work together. It's super important. Uh, I think community is really important in photography. I say it all the time. Um, also, the 6th and 7th, so that week, we're doing, we do workshops occasionally at our studio. So if you're interested in that, we have information on our social media, but you can go to 1200sessions.com to sign up for those. Those are not free, but they're small sessions. You get together, uh, kind of hands-on. You get to actually touch stuff. Well, I mean, you got to touch stuff already, so you're like, all right, touch stuff, I don't care. Uh, equipment, you know, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, what else? So that's it. Have a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate such things. Uh, you know, I think it's always good to look at what you got and be like, wow, I've, I've got something. Because no matter where you are no matter in your career or where you're going in photography, you're somewhere, right? You're better than, off than you were before on some level, whether you know more or you're doing more jobs or you're just growing. You're always going to grow and succeed, and that's good. You just keep going forward. If you want to buy Profoto stuff, there's this deal. Cliff was handing out stuff, but if you're online, I'll say it one more time. Uh, you get 500 or up or 1,000. Let's see, 500 o, uh, of OCF RFI accessories when you purchase. Oh, if you buy a B1 or B10 Plus, if you get the two-head kit, you get up to $1,000 worth of accessories. There's basically kits made online, I guess, that already have this stuff. Or if you call on the phone to Adorama, you can customize it. This is also for you guys here in the store. The A1, which we were using today, you get a free battery. The A1X, which is like the upgraded model of that, you get a grid kit, gel kit, wide angle kit. The grid kit's, awesome. the, the grid kit's pretty awesome. I need to get one myself. Um, what else? That's pretty much it for this. This actually goes until December 31st, so if you don't have to buy it the right the second if you don't want to. Uh, but it is actually pretty good. Uh, also, I don't know if the B2's left. Oh, yeah. But people who have been looking, Cliff doesn't want me to say this, but whatever. They're, they're discontinuing. I don't know if they're officially discontinuing. B2s are very, very discounted right now. So B2s are like the, the first of the OCF lights. So they're, they're like a, a different version of it. They're very good. I have them. It's like $1,000 for a, a pack less, and two heads. Uh, less than 9, 25, 000. 925 for a pack and two heads. If you want to get into a system of, of good flashes and you've been looking at Profoto, that's a way to do it. And you don't have to get a remote because they have optical trigger and sync. Yeah, so. you could do that too. Uh, if you want one of these, I don't even know what these cost. I, I, a lot. Five. This is pretty awesome. And now I hate that I used it because now I want one because it's pretty awesome actually. It's not so powerful, but sometimes having a, 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 some kind of a limit on what you do can help you be more creative too. Like, look, we got a shot of Justin that was pretty decent. I mean, you know, where is that shot? Somewhere in there, there's a shot of Justin that we shot with the bonnet of all things. Right, so if you don't know, I'm Daniel Norton, photographer. You can follow me on YouTube. I have a lot of YouTube videos. Seth is last ex-witness everywhere. 
Um, if there's any other questions, ask them now, because I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna start breaking down my stuff, and somebody's gonna walk up to me and go, I have a question, and that question might be relevant to everybody else. So if you got a question, spit it out, because people wanna know, right? We should all try to learn. Online, anything, nothing? Okay, we'll see you next time. Maybe. <laughs>